Welcome back, collective. This is Earth Angel 444 Love Guide, and I'm back with another collective message. So let's go ahead and pray, and we can get straight, uh, straight into it. Father, we thank you for being our Alpha and our Omega, for being our beginning and our ending, the first and the last. He who was, who is, and who is to come. You are the Lord God Almighty, and we thank you, Jesus, that you make intercessions for us daily as you're seated at the right hand of the Father. We thank you for all that you are and for all that you've done. We thank you for your blood. I pray that your blood would cover this space and the energy in this reading and everything about this reading. And I pray that all demonic energy and forces would not be able to penetrate the blessings and the anointing that you have in here. I bind and rebuke every demonic energy that would try to take any part or take a hold of this reading in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your wisdom, for your knowledge, your insight, and your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Hi, collective. So, um, and I just saw this, like... You might have been waiting for a long time for something like you had this vision of something you could have been like experiencing a lot of anxiety about it and whether or not there was some type of financial abundance or some type of financial beginning. You're being guided to stay optimistic, like stay within that vision that you have because something is coming your way. <laughs> Yeah, there is a certain level of prosperity that you've been manifesting, collective. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So there is, it looks like you went through a situation recently where you had to like literally move away and go into calmer waters or, you know, like step into a healing space. Although there was still some unfinished, like unfinished emotions in regards to words or whatever that was said, but it's like, it could look like you're running away or escapism or something like that, but this is you moving forward. Um, now that you've moved forward past whatever was hurting you whatever words that were said whatever calamity or anything that could look like you're in some form of escapism this looks like you made the intelligent decision this was you being logical collective this is you being discerning and this is you moving in integrity this was an intelligent um decision that you made to move away to a calmer place. It looks like you were dealing with a group of people that were like very gossipy, like really bitchy people. Like seriously. It's it's like um these people are just fake friends, you know, like they lack any type of they lack any type of depth or interest in their own life. So they have gathered to kind of be the part of your demise because, you know, there's something that they don't like about it, whatever. So it's like, you know, all of these things coming at you could have really had you feeling trapped and, res and restricted collective. Like, you know, like you really feeling the pressure of this, like this was meant to victimize you. And based on the way that you left, like choosing to progress and move forward, it looks like you were victimized by a group of gossiping bitches. My God, forget. No. I don't want to swear, but seriously, that's just what I'm seeing. That's what this is. And it was like, this was done intentionally to affect your happiness. This was done to affect your family life, the way that, you know, like you have this security within your home, the way that, you know, whatever type of happy celebrating you do with your friends and family, this was literally meant to cause you some type of heartbreak and to make you feel lonely or to create this appearance of, you know, you not knowing which direction to go or like wanting you to be confused about something. 
It looks like here, though, you are standing in a space of victory because you didn't let these obstacles stop you. You are moving forward towards your success. And it actually looks like your progress is picking up momentum very, very quickly. Like you're traveling towards something and you could have, you know, made the decision to take sudden action on something. But you walking away and abandoning this, abandoning Hmm. I'm going to start clarifying because yeah, it's like, okay, so when you realize that all of this was being done intentionally to affect your happiness, to disrupt your stability in your home, to cause you some level of heartbreak, you decided to gear up and move forward and move past that. Like you have bigger things on your mind and on your agenda. Your purpose is a lot bigger than this. And it's like, no obstacles are going to stop you now. You've already had to move past. This looks like the final obstacle. You walking past this has put you in such a mature and well-rounded headspace. This is like, you are able to nurture the things that are really going to make you feel wealthy and prosperous. Once you, once you are in a space where you're fully grounded and you're out of this whatever craziness that this is your independence is is coming and this is like independence that wealth brings yeah so collective you're getting ready to have like this aha moment you are getting ready to have a moment of clarity um in in your like in your process of balancing all of this and moving on towards abundance, which you may not even see that you're moving towards a, a like a really high social status or you're moving towards something that's going to really make you financially independent. But once you get this moment of clarity... What you could have really realized, like in this, this moment of clarity is that there's going to be some sudden destruction and loss happening for these, um, for these people. These people are getting ready to experience a certain level of sudden upheaval. Like this could be some type of violence or pain. This could be like a bankruptcy, natural disaster. Sorry, I think my eye is This could be some type of like natural disaster or whatever this is, but this is going to feel like something was suddenly just destroyed in these people's lives. And it's like, they're trying to make a break for it. They're really going to try and run when this happens to them. They're really going to think that, you know, they can get out of this, but these people were very underhanded and they had very dangerous and risky behavior, but they wanted to ignore it. They wanted to ignore their behavior and they wanted to think that there was going to be a lack of consequence for them. And there is no lack of consequences. There's none. Or I mean, <laughs> this will not lack consequence. Like these, these, these people are going to experience the consequences. We're all responsible for our decisions and the things that we do and the choices that we make. And it's just like, yeah, people really have to take ownership for the things that they've done. This is like God is getting ready to come in. Hmm. Hmm. Well, okay. So I'm going to get more into it to see exactly what he, what's going to happen to them, but it looks like, you know, immediately, and this could have a part of this upheaval for them. They're going to see you being in such a balanced energy where things are working out for you. It's like this level of divine assistance that you have. You stay balanced. You stay very patient, you know, like you could have a soulmate coming into your life or, um, this is the divine that's going to be coming in, but there's going to be some type of commitment or there's going to be some form of collaboration or teamwork. And this is because of your dedication, your attention to detail. There's something coming in that's going to really make things good for you. 
Yeah, you could have somebody coming towards you right now. These people are not going to be able to, they're not going to be able to forget what they've done. And what was left unhealed and unsettled, they won't be able to get away from the fact that they didn't try to find some type of reasonable outcome with this. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. So yeah, so it's like this could really have something to do with work or employment or what you do. Um, you could be self-employed, but it doesn't have to necessarily. This is basically saying that the gifts that you possess. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you. This is saying that, you know, the gifts that you possess, the knowledge and the level of intellect, like you are a peaceful person. You are a very, very meek and peaceful person. But that's exactly why God comes in and he fights your battles for you because it's like people show their true colors and this is just so terrible, but you have so much to offer. You have so much to give. And this is what made it like, this was not the, the thing that you wanted to do. This was not, you know, like this was kind of like, oh, maybe type of thing. <sighs> This would have been a maybe you wanting to really walk away from this situation, but it's like you were forced, your hand was forced to leave something and you had to stand in your strength and literally detach from this because you know that you have a lot to offer wherever you go. And, and it looks like, you know, you're going someplace carrying an abundance of gifts, talents, resources, and, you know, the people that were celebrating these really terrible people that were celebrating are going to, they're going to be the ones feeling very, very trapped and isolated. There's retribution coming. These people are going to have to pay for what they've done. And when they pay for, when, when it comes back on them, it's going to feel like some level of a great vengeance coming at them. And it's like, because these people were jealous, they were envious of your, your life, your abundance, the fact that, you know, or they were jealous of your marriage. Just take it however it is. It's like these people did not want you to have the serenity or any form of stability. What they saw when they looked at you was every cup that you needed to be filled in your life in regards to your happiness, your fulfillment, your family, your dreams, your hopes. Your They were so irritated and so upset about that. They wanted you to be heartbroken about something. But here's the thing. You are the type to be very obedient when God tells you to pray. You're very obedient in your actions and the way that you behave. You behave according to the moral standards of your, you know, your faith and all of that. These people don't understand that, that they sowed negative seeds on themselves because it's almost like you went and captured the seeds before they even took root and you sent them back and replanted them back in the enemy's field. So, you know, they might be very intrigued in regards to how you have handled this level of family disappointment or family heartbreak or, you know, like this could be very, very intriguing to whomever this person or these people are that were fake friends to you. It's like, you know, you geared up. And you went about your way. You really did. You allowed them to go their way. And you have this level of self power, of willpower and self control that it wasn't hard for you to move away and refocus your attention on the things that make sense to you that actually are, um, you know, that bring any, that bring reward to you. It's like you were like, okay, yes, that I will do. I will turn my back on their, you know, shenanigans, BS, whatever it is, because it's like these people wanted to burn you. Not like, that's kind of what it feels like. The level of mischief they were involved in, and this is really sad coming back on them because the level of mischief that they were involved in, they really wanted you to feel it. They really wanted you to burn. It's like, it's reminding me of um, the book of Daniel 
when Daniel and Ashak, Meshach, and Abednego, Azrak, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were put in that furnace, like they were put in that hot furnace and they were meant to be burned alive because of who they were. They weren't following the laws and the ordinances of Nebuchadnezzar in regards to worshiping Nebuchadnezzar and not praying to their own God or not, you know, having their own mind or not, you know, like this is like, this was their punishment for not worshiping false gods or false idols. Because they know that the Lord, our God, is the one and only true and living God. Everything else is their, their demons. They were supposed to be burned for that. But it's like the soldier that was trying to put them in the furnace. They um um Nebuchadnezzar had them turn the, the heat up on the furnace so high that the soldier was that was trying to put them in there burned. And then they were in the furnace and they were still walking around in the furnace. It did not burn them. Not one hair on their head was scorched. There was no evidence of fire, flame, soot, nothing. There was no evidence of it. And it's like there was a fourth man in the fire and they saw that. And this is like, you're not alone, collective. You are not. They wanted to put you through something that was supposed to burn you to nothing, to ash. <laughs> but here's the thing. Somebody that had a hand in it to try and put you in the fire has already been eliminated. <laughs> but it's like after they saw this miracle that they did not burn, not one hair on their head was scorched, that there was a fourth man in the fire. The Lord was there with them. The angel of the Lord were encamped around about them. God continuously protected Daniel. <laughs> They didn't have a problem with God after that. <laughs> Funny, right? But anyways, it's like, that's what they wanted to do to you. They thought that they were going to do that and then, you know, make sure you suffered long and hard and good for whatever that was. And then, you know, they were going to replace you. But you geared up so quickly. You were like, yeah, I, you've given me news to travel and move forward. And now I'm going to make this into a holiday. I'm going to make this into something that turns into excitement for me. I'm going to, and this is what you're saying, collective. You're like, that's okay, because I'm good with thinking on my feet. And now I'm ready to take sudden action and move in a different direction in my life. So it's, you know, you are bold and fearless. And I'm so proud of you, collective. Whatever it was that you walked away from, you turned your back on it and you said a stern no. Whoever this was, whatever this was, you let this go. It, they can see it as escapism. They can see it as, you know, running away or whatever you're going through, some type of hardship or withdrawal. It doesn't matter. It does not matter to you because you could have been invested in up to eight different things. There could have been like eight different um, victories or there's something about the number eight here. You could have walked away from a family of eight, a group, whatever it is, but you're moving on. Just period. You're moving on. And this is going to cause you so much um, elevation in regards to your level of maturity. This is going to elevate you as far as your social status. Like you're a butterfly now. You're a butterfly now. Whatever you had to move forward from quickly, whatever had you feeling constricted and constrained, that was like the cocoon. Unbeknownst to whoever wanted to be a B-I-T-C-H to you, you are now in butterfly form. You are in rare form. This is going to increase your independence. This will make you feel very financially stable. The um, Your wealth, your luxury, all of that, that is all going to be so rock solid stable. And this is because you turned around when you saw what they had planned for you and how malicious this was at no fault of your own. You have to kind of like you have to go away. This wasn't even you wanting to go. This was like a, you know, like, okay, maybe like, well, you know, like you hadn't even really had a full opportunity, like an opportunity to really decide. But you're cool, calm, and collective because you were ready to go. It's just like, okay, I'm going to go with what it is that I need to go. But when you realize like, okay, hang on, let me really think about this. These are some, I'm dealing with some real bitchy snakes. 
like seriously. And now you have stood up to the challenge. You are ready to face your fears, your enemies, your challenges, anything that wants to stop you or be a barrier. You are not going to, you know, stay tucked away in, in, you know, some space where people can't see you or whatever the case is. You are going to be fierce in regards to what this is. You've turned away from any emotional connection with this. You've turned away from, you've turned away, you've turned your back on any type of feelings with this. You've let this go completely. But now the fierceness has arisen in you. The fierceness has arisen in you. You were like, you may have just gone through like another dark night of the soul. You could have really felt like abandoned and burdened and lost or left and alone or something like that. But you know what? This has really aided to your growth. Not saying that we're trying to embrace so many like trials or, you know, situations that are difficult for us. Like, oh, yeah, you know, like we're going to grow from that. But I mean, the truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. When you process a situation or you can process a lesson and actually learn and gather the right knowledge and the right information from it, yeah, you are ready to move forward and you own that power from that. You don't have to give that back, okay? Even if you feel like you got a C, you can still pass a class with a C. I've done it. <laughs> but it's a pass. No, you don't have to go do it again either. And you get full credit for it. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you don't want to have to be in a space where you're juggling your emotions or where you're trying to balance and, and you know, like your resources or your finances or anything like that. You know, like you were put in a position where you felt stuck and alone. You were you were placed in a hardship and this was done intentionally. And it's like seeing the truth in that is empowering. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I don't even need to get into all that time. Is it? So here's the thing, your adversaries, they're not going to ever be able to forget this. They won't ever be able to, this is going to be something that stays unresolved. And this is going to be like a very difficult memory for them to have to relive and re-experience. And it's never going to stop popping back up. It's never, it's, it's like they're going to experience a certain level of chaos and destruction and it's not going to leave them alone for a long time, for a long time. This is a very sticky web that they have weaved. And it's like, these people are gonna try and get away, like making a break for it because of what they did in the dark, what they did in the shadows, all of the deceit and all of the corrupt, you know, the lies, the manipulation, all of this to, to cause some form of instability in your personal life, in your home life, because they saw you as having it all. They saw you as being way too happy, having way too much joy and love and peace, you know, like these people. So it's like the level of abuse and the level of chaos that they're getting ready to experience it's going to be happening for a very long time for them. And this is going to be like on, this is going to be the playback loop from hell for these people. And they want to get away now, but they can't. They cannot. There is no strategy for them getting away. It's like what they did in the dark has now been exposed. They could really be spying on you. And the reason why they're spying on you, Collective, is because they want to make sure there's no consequence for their actions. 
They're trying to spy to make sure that you're not going to try and um, call them out or retaliate in any way or do something. You know, they they don't they're worried that you're going to use some type of power influence you have to make them look bad. So they keep sneaking to check this. But they should be looking behind their shoulder. They should be looking over their shoulder and behind their back because it's not you collective that's after them. It's the spirit of God. The angels of the most high have been released. They're headed to whatever this team is. They they had a certain level of teamwork in doing this. <laughs> Balance has been released and it's going to catch them in every area. Wherever they try to run, wherever they want to go, this level of balance and temperance from the divine, this is like the angelic is coming in like, no, no, no. Let me pour you back the cup of indignation. <laughs> like you try to pour this to the collective. No, you're going to get that. This is for you. So it's like the angels have been released and they're hunting. They are now hunting these people. They're hunting this group. This group wants to get away. Like they're going to try. They're going to they're going to try something. But the angels are on their tail, and that's what I see. It's like the angels are coming for them. Mm. I feel my mouth keeps shutting. The Lord doesn't want me to say too much about what's going to happen to them because they're spying. So they could be really trying to like figure it out. But what I'm hearing is that inner calm that you had when you took this action, when you decided to do this, to the collective, keep that same inner calm, keep that same energy. That's what I'm hearing. The angel didn't even lift his head up to say that while he's pouring back to them. Wow. Ooh. This is going to bring some new perspective to these people. I heard they're going to grow up and it's going to be hard. This type of growth is going to be hard for this team. They use teamwork and determination and they had dedication and they had goals set against you collective. <laughs> wow. That's a yes. Yes, they did do that. Which is why there's nowhere, there's nowhere they can go. There's nowhere they can go physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. They can't escape it. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything else. Let it just come and overtake them. Surprise! <laughs> Gosh. Okay, I'm not, yeah, I'm gonna close this one out. Um, yeah, that's, I hope that helps, collective. I hope it helps. All right, love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.